Ladies and gentlemen, uh, good morning. I would like to thank uh, President Jana for this uh, very kind invitation. It's not for the first time I'm attending this uh, wonderful event, an event which uh, has already become uh, a true institution um, of our uh, NGO debate and, uh, and discussions landscape in Romania. And um, I think, um, I think uh, it already gained a well-deserved uh, reputation over the last years. And today we see uh, enjoying uh, uh, such a distinguished participation of uh, both officials and experts. And uh, uh, at the outset, I would like to, uh, to stress the uh, full support of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs for, uh, for the Bucharest Forum. Um, and I hope uh, the uh, next editions will be even, uh, even more uh, interesting and uh, insightful. Um, I believe, uh, well, Europe uh, is indeed uh, an entity at the center of a storm. Um, as the title of the forum states. And we have been uh, speaking for quite a long time uh, already about supposedly radical uh, strategic shifts, uh, new global centers of, uh, of gravity, about uh, emerging powers, about uh, a so-called EU's decrease in relevance, um, about uh, successive resets, and now about a so-called dissolution of the European uh, security architecture. And the last couple of years have been illustrative in, the, in their sequence of new crises superseding uh, the previous ones. And we are in a constant need for adaptation and fresh policy making, as President John just said. Nevertheless, the deepening of the crisis within and around is forcing us to stay focused on our shared strategic interests and the array of complicating surrounding threats. Somehow we have started to lose sight of the centrality of our shared values for the EU and NATO project, the values inherent in our liberal political systems, the force residing in our duty of solidarity, and the importance of substantial and convincing leadership. We might debate, and I think this is a very much justified and vital uh, debate, about competing visions of democracy, about the sometimes conflicting human aspirations for freedom, security, and prosperity, and to what extent there exists a core of basic universal values. And we must have the courage to affirm that there is indeed such a thing as universal values. In this context of unpredictability of the recent year's evolutions in the EU, in the neighboring regions, and beyond, we have an obligation to re-inject a new trust and commitment in the defense of our values in their capacity of influencing and shaping the global context. And when we say that our core values should be the starting point in rebuilding a more successful European and larger regional vision, it is because these values stand at the intersection of the internal and external dimensions of such a vision, at the foundations of EU security. And they have continued relevance and should have continued dynamism. Against this background, we should acknowledge our role as a major stakeholder for our immediate neighborhood, be to the east or to the south. In both areas, there are recent trends, a, national, a, a natural uh, accumulated or stimulated by third actors, breaching internationally accepted rules or established human rights. But these are not only destabilizing those regions, but they are increasingly redrawing our external and internal security environment in a negative sense. But out of this storm, there are also opportunities we need to benefit from. In the Eastern neighborhood, shoring up these values is essential to ensuring that our partners keep their options free for reestablishing the elements for interaction and cooperation on the basis of international law and respect for the rules of conduct between and among states. Last year, we have witnessed the illegal annexation of Crimea by the Russian Federation. We also saw hybrid warfare tactics being used. Furthermore, Russia's continued support for the separatists in East Ukraine led to a conflict where thousands of people lost their lives. Thus, an assertive Russia continues to stimulate the belt of frozen conflicts around the Black Sea. It continues to project force to promote its own interest at the expense of the international public order and the international rule of law. On the eastern flank of NATO, we are confronted every day with this method constantly tasting our solidarity. In the South, we need to abandon passivity in order to shape a new picture of a stable, truly 
developing nations and states and constructive regional conduct. Here too, the values of the EU and NATO well, are defending and are directly relevant to the manner in which we can support the re-emergence of our southern, southern region and our southern neighborhoods with real positive impact on people's lives. The refugee dossier that is on Europe's hands is complex and directly relevant to our security. We have accepted our part of responsibility and solidarity, joining the effort following the customary EU debate that is part of our rules and way of functioning. Moving on the rearranging the Middle East chessboard, this will certainly constrain all of us to reassess our interests, our contribution and our means of being constructive in the region with a view of stabilizing it and relieving the peoples there of their current terrible distress. We witness other continuously emerging challenges and threats. We see ballistic missiles and the interests of state and non-state actors to acquire, acquire such technology. Even if a positive result was reached on the nu nuclear deal with Iran, that country's ballistic program continued despite maintenance of sanctions. Last Sunday's Iranian ballistic missile test demonstrated an increased accuracy and that this challenge is more relevant than ever. Cyber attacks threaten security infrastructures and pose increased risks. In this moment when our Euro-Atlantic community is at a crossroads of challenges from both the East and the South, Romania's added values resides in its capacity to act as a strong, predictable and active ally and partner right at the eastern borders of NATO and the EU in the extending strategic Black Sea region. For the first time in our history as a border country, we are inside the community of values we have always been part of from a cultural and axiological point of view. We are for the first time on the right side, the safe side of the border. And we have an extraordinary vocation for being a bridge towards this region. And therefore, we have a duty and responsibility for ourselves as a country, but also for the community of values we are part of, to use this vocation of border and bridge at the same time to project stability, democracy, and prosperity in the region. We also advocate for an enhanced approach of our allies and EU partners to deal with the threats and risks rising in our extended region and to reduce the high degree of unpredictability. That is why solidarity is essential to our security. Allow me to highlight some concrete ways that can make us cope better with such challenges. First, the transatlantic bond. It is essential to approaching the current challenges in a successful way. The US presence in Europe represents a strong commitment for our joint security as well as for our world security. Only a united and cohesive Euro-Atlantic community will be able to defuse threats, foster dialogue, and project stability. And Romania can testify in this regard. The strategic partnership with the United States is one of the paramount dimensions of our foreign and security policy, and the presence of U.S. forces in Romania is an essential reassurance factor. The U.S. commitment to the European security is reflected in many ways. I would mention the European Reassurance Initiative, which demonstrated the resolve of the U.S. together with its allies to complement the readiness action plan. I would mention the European phased adaptive approach on missile defense, wherein Romania hosts the first Aegis Assure facility in Devesello, operational by the end of this year, and this is a proof of the centrality of a strategic relation with the United States and its role in the European security. Second, a strong and capable NATO is essential to meeting security challenges in the East, but also in the South. We will advocate for continuous allied adaptation and consolidation at the Warsaw Summit next year, beyond the Wales Summit decisions, as the challenges that we face are highly complex and on long term. Part of this adaptation involves also NATO's partners. In May, at the NATO Foreign Ministerial, I have advanced the proposal of an integrated NATO policy with two legs, both for the East and for the South, with a view to engage partners while addressing their specific needs in order to advance stability and prevent conflict. And this, well, is a process which is already ongoing. Achieving also the full potential of the NATO-EU cooperation is a prerequisite for joint added value in answering the common challenges we face. Such an effort would be also beneficial for the consolidation of an arch of stability at the eastern and southern borders of both EU and NATO. Our approach is also reflected in the debates 
on the new European security strategy. Again, here we need to see more engagement to our east and to our south, more efficient use of EU instruments in common security and defense missions and operations. We need a stronger NATO-EU relation that I have already mentioned. We need increased focus on EU's interests in Central Asia, as well as increased attention on energy security and cybersecurity. Thirdly, the strategic importance of the Black Sea should be reflected in a platform for regional engagement and cooperation. This area is a melting pot of different interests, but by securing the Black Sea, we create the conditions both to engage Russia in dialogue and to project stability in Central Asia. Also in Antalya, I have proposed a reflection process of the importance of the Black Sea security for NATO security, which is now underway. Romania is ready to assume its responsibilities, helping to foster such initiatives at a regional level with a view to ensure stability and security to the benefit of allies, EU members, and partners alike. And together with Poland, we have called for a meeting of the allied heads of states from the eastern flank to take place in Bucharest in early November. We need to bring our views of a consolidated eastern flank forward, not directed against any country, but to promote stability and security in the region and as a reassurance of the eastern flank allies of NATO's strong commitment to their defense. Romania also advanced a proposal for an international court against terrorism. Such an institution can act as an important deterrent, but can also be an efficient instrument in delivering justice through the means of international law. The recent terrorist attack in Ankara highlights once more the need for a comprehensive, united approach to the global phenomenon of terrorism, a response that should include the tools provided by international law. It is my hope that such initiatives stimulate the engagement of more allies and partners in processes that ensure our stability and security. Now, I have mentioned that regional cooperation in the Black Sea remains a priority. And the most difficult problem for this region is the geopolitical fractures between different actors, generated by clashes in the political, military, economic, and energy spheres, reflecting, of course, divergent interests among states. We encourage a complementary approach that needs to take into account all relevant platforms related in one way or another to the Black Sea region, the Eastern Neighborhood and Eurasia at large. A new harmonization of policies and projects is needed in our area among those of the Black Sea Synergy, the Eastern Partnership, the BSEC, the EU's Danube Security Strategy, uh, Synergy, Maritime Security and Central Asia Strategy so as to enhance the Union's role as a major relevant actor in relation to its neighbors' partners and its neighbors' neighbors. A new Romanian initiative, which was forwarded in the context of the, of the ENP review, the European Neighborhood Policy Review, the security trusts, envisages platforms of regional dialogue on security issues in the broad sense of the, con of the concept, aimed at building trust not only among the EU member states and its neighbors, but also trust between EU member states, the direct EU neighbors, and the neighbors of the neighbors. We need indeed to cooperate with neighboring countries and their own neighbors, as well as we need to engage other actors interested in the stability of these regions. And we have proposed three such platforms for the Black Sea region, for the Caucasus, but also for the Gulf area in the Middle East and Sub-Saharan Africa. These informal platforms do not include a military dimension, and they are multidimensional discussion platforms. They are interested because they build trust, and they can lead to solving conflicts in the Union's vicinity. Because the multiplication of frozen conflicts is the last thing the region needed, and the evolutions around the Black Sea determined by the massive increase of the maritime power of the Russian Federation following the illegal annexation of Crimea, have broken the strategic balance around us. What all of us should keep in mind is that the hybrid use of classical threats, symmetrical or asymmetrical, makes it almost impossible that one state alone could respond effectively to the whole array of challenges the region and the world face today. In the current context of multiplying regional complications, we have an important stake in revitalizing EU's and the West's action for consolidating the Caucasus and Central Asia as relevant strategic stable regions. Europe is vitally interested, and we hope 
it is not the only one. In the emergence of a genuine cooperative framework on the economically essential land and sea corridors of Eurasia, by connecting the Caspian Sea with the Black Sea and the use of the potential of Constanza port and the Danube River. We need to reach out to the more influential powers from Central Asia. And this is the way to ensure that we are secure within our European borders, secure in our regional environment, and that everybody feels secure and concretely benefits from this. The current complex challenges should serve as a built-up of rationale for invigorating the European vision and model. Realistic ambitions, realistic expectations are essential for re-establishing the trust of Europe's own citizens and to preserve its soft power leverage. In the EU, we need to have a deeper, a more serious and applied discussion also on what are the potential and the limits for a European hard power in the interest of our own security, in the broad sense again, as well as for better responses to multiplying global crises and urgencies. The new EU global strategy for foreign policy and security that will be adopted next year, I think it's a very good opportunity for defining our role in the changing global environment. By more genuinely committing itself to an effort of adaptation, Europe should be able to prove wrong those who, from inside or from outside, be they populists or power-minded competitors, rush to discard the attractiveness of the EU model. As I mentioned before, Romania has been a frontier state for almost its entire modern era, which gives us a more sensitive, a more particular awareness of what it means to be part of a secure community of sharing in its responsibilities and its benefits. And our partners in the East find themselves in a regional situation that has significantly deteriorated, and their hopes cannot rely just on themselves. We must insist on defending their freedom of choice, their potential for development, the solidity of their institutions, and the well-being of their societies. This means not only that our assistance has to be consistent and effective, but means to keep them on the healthy way towards European integration, towards real security and chances for development. And it also means for us, for them, for their neighbors, that there will be no cherry picking in terms of our values and the obligations. Romania is ready to respond to all tests the European community is facing. Our common response must be strong, must be meaningful, because we absolutely need to succeed if Europe is to emerge more influent and powerful from these turbulent times. I stop here and I thank you for your attention.